Alrighty, how's it going, guys? I know that I am a little later than usual on Monday, but we have a guest over right now, so hopefully that's something that can be forgiven. Also, another fun thing, if you guys were paying attention to the Resident Evil 2 stream last night, then you know that my computer burned itself out, which is neat! Also, hope everybody's having a good day so far. Uh, if not, then uh, hopefully we'll be able to fix that, since today we're going to be ripping into a dude. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff to go over today. It's not going to be uh, the easiest thing. It's going to be a bit of a dense stream, but that's fine. I hope you enjoy. Also, whether I get to the information or not, uh, because I actually do have some, some clips that I'm going to have to go over through this, uh, if I get to it, then you have Atheist Rationale, as usual, to thank for clipping things and doing some back research for me. If not... Uh, then they will be gotten to on a separate video that will be a little more focused. But that all said, I do see we've got some some of my good friends in the chat. We have Callan, the Atheist Rationale, we have Dragnaut, and then we've got some other people as well who I am less familiar with. But nonetheless, you guys are awesome, and I like seeing you in the chat. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day. That all said, uh, I see Del Griffin says, neat stream set up. Hey! Seems like it's your first time. If cool, awesome. How's it going? So, yeah, I do need to warn you guys. Uh, the first thing we're going to be going over is a bit of an incident that happened uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, the content is going to be dark. Um, not in the way that the content has been dark before on my channel. I know when we've dealt with stuff like biblical gender roles, and when we've dealt with stuff like God, Gun, Guts, and Glory, um, or just the NIFB in general, just the NIFB as a group, as a concept, is a pretty dark thing to deal with. This, though, is not going to be... Oh, yeah, I see that Emmett is in the chat as well. I'm going to get grilled for that because I didn't notice my girlfriend in the chat. Please just shoot me. I deserve to be shot, and Aaron's there as well. Okay, cool. Everybody's here. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, oh, shit. Sir, sorry, straight up. Anywho, um, I know that when we've dealt with other dark dark stuff before, uh, that dark stuff is usually a bit to the side. It's something that, like, it aggravates me on principle, and it, it doesn't usually directly affect uh, somebody whom I care about and care for. Today's a bit different. <laughs> Today's a bit different. Today, we are dealing with the Messenger Reveals, uh, who is somebody who is currently hidden from my channel because there's a particular thing that they do that I'm not really a fan of, and I really prefer uh, not having spammed in my chat, and that is they think they can cure PTSD. Now, here's the deal. Would I like to live in a world where PTSD had a cure? Absolutely, I would. But I don't currently live in that world, and I don't try to pretend that I currently live in that world. It is something that can be treated, it is something that can be handled, but it is not something that, as we currently know, can be cured in any meaningful way. Uh, to claim that you can cure it would mean that you have a burden of proof, uh, which is something that uh, Deuteruni here has not actually met. So... Let's go ahead and get into the first bits. So, bit of backstory here. This is a stream that was on the Raging Atheist channel, and this stream in particular dealt with a bit of a conversation that happened between the Atheist Rationale, Raging Atheist, uh, Chris Hansen of Bible Biblical History Skeptics, and also a couple others. Uh, Aaron and The Messenger Revealed uh, had their conversation in here as well. And it is the way in which uh, Aaron was treated during this that led me originally to make this video because there was that initial uh, anger of one of the people who are close to me getting hurt. But there's other parts of it as well. So everybody who's watched my channel knows that I have a series called Dangers of Woo. This is because first and foremost, I am a skeptic. As a skeptic, I like to find things that seem iffy and see if they have any merit. Do some research into them. As a result, I end up dealing with a lot of woo. I also deal with a lot of apologetics because that comes part and parcel with it. As a result, I find myself dealing with all kinds of nonsense and dumb shittery. This is going to be one of those bits of nonsense and dumb shittery. So let's go ahead and... Where do I have it? I know I have it here. I'm, I'm a bad YouTuber, guys. It's okay. Boom! We got a video right there. And in this video, 
we're going to go ahead and take a gander at that conversation, and maybe I'll have some commentary throughout it, and it'll frame this entire conversation. And then hopefully we'll be able to get into the clips afterwards. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's begin. As I said, Messenger Reveals has been hidden from my channel because they are a woo peddler and, in the same sense, snake oil salesman. So, let's go. Suris, I don't think he really had any preconceived notions of you. Did you? Did for you sure or did you not? Did you or did you not try and offer somebody your cure for PTSD in the conversation? No. I mean, in his chat room. Then what did you do? Because I was there. I, and I, 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 happened, I, but... I told I told them that there that they that there was a that they didn't have to continue to suffer from the symptoms that they were suffering to them with PTSD. That there was cures for it. Okay, so we've already got our first problem. So again. PTSD is currently something which doesn't have a cure. It is something that we do not know a cure for. We have treatment for it. We have methods to help, but we do not have ways to remove the underlying cause of PTSD. Once that trauma has happened, that PTSD is there, and it's something that you can't get rid of as far as we know, as far as any amount of medical and psychological research has done. If you can get rid of all the symptoms then, yeah, we can go ahead and say that that is essentially, especially because this is more of a cognitive issue, a cure, but you don't really get rid of all the symptoms. You can remove many of the triggers that cause those symptoms, but that's not exactly the same thing. And these things end up cropping up again later on in life. So, let us do the thing. Oh, also, yeah, you're right. I should probably... I should probably make sure... That I've got Discord open, because if I decide that I'm going to do this thing, and then fan art's not open, you guys are going to eviscerate me. I know it. So I got that up now. Everything's up and ready. I can see fan art when it gets submitted in. Uh, that doesn't mean that you guys should trust me on that. You should you should definitely still, like, ping me when fan art comes in, uh, because I'm still completely and totally freaking awful. Uh, at finding it. Uh, what thing just got here? All right. So let us continue. And when they question it, I said, I've helped people be free from PTSD. And that's when it got into the whole proselyte bullshit. And then when he blocked me and then he went on his own rant. Thank you very much for the $1 super chat. I am oddity. And we already have another point of contention. So what had happened during that stream? Uh, this was a while ago. Uh, Messenger Revealed said that they can cure PTSD uh, and that it all comes down to a type of theistic belief that cures it, uh, in, in which case we ended up having a short conversation about that where I said, okay, well, if you think you understand the psychological uh, side of this so well, then please go talk to somebody who's an expert in this, uh, not expert expert, but at least more learned in this, than I am, and that would be Shannon. Like, when it comes to psychological things, I will usually defer to Shannon, uh, Shannon Q, that is, more often than myself, because they are much more learned here. This is, in fact, what they have a degree in. In the same way that if I need something in the field of sociology, I will defer to Callan, because Callan is my friend who works in that field and is studied in that field. And when I desperately need information that comes from that field, they're the person that's going to know how to locate it. That's something that she's good at. Same with Shannon. So, I make it I make it a point when I am not an expert to go to somebody who I think is. If I need help on something with philosophy, I'm going to go to my friend Steve. If I need help with something in sociology, I'm going to go to Callan. If I need psychology, I'm going to go to uh, to Shannon. If I need help on anything with Aramaic translation, uh, dealing with the Bible, I'm going to go to Dr. Josh at Digital Hammurabi. If I desperately need help on, uh, let's say, a mythicist argument, uh, then I'm probably going to see if that's consistent with what most mythicists do so i'm going to go to people like ge or on the opposite side i will go to chris hansen so basically i have a series of people who i who i will defer to when i feel like i do not have expertise in any of these things as a result 
I find myself in a situation where I'm deferring to experts a lot because I'm a freaking dumbass. So, let us continue the video here. And that's what when... happened there is he blocked you immediately and said he doesn't want snake oil sales. Uh, snake he never, oil. He, he never is... said anything oh. about snake oil. Uh, that could be true. I may have said something about snake oil salesman. I may have not. I would have to go through the stream myself because my memory is horrible. Many years back, I hit a car with my bicycle. It split into two, three, actually, and I slammed headfirst in the concrete. And my memory has been completely defunct ever since. I never got it checked out or anything because I'm a poor boy. I can't afford going to the hospital for things. Uh, but <laughs> my memory is not great. So that eh, could be the case. If somebody remembers that that incident, this was like last year, uh, then, you know, let me know. Well, we we can go back and look at the video. So right? that, I, I, listen, I listened, to, I listened but... to the video. <laughs> Atheist <Eighth laughs> Rationale, I listened to the video. He said I literally I got you guys he, feeling good about had, each other. And now no, you're we're still feeling good. We're still, we're, no, we're been, still feeling, feeling good. Been... So, um... Jake3D in the chat did have a question, and I, I want to answer that because it's very pertinent here. I'm not going to answer a lot of questions in the chat that don't come in super chat form, not because I'm, I'm money greedy, but we've got 164 people in here. I need some way of making sure that that certain things are getting answered. Um, but that all said, uh, Jake3D says, do you think if we could memory edit and remove those memories, it could cure PTSD, or would they still have it, just not remember the cause? So from what I understand... Um, with PTSD itself, I do believe that once the psychological stuff has happened, it does end up having a biochemical process come out as a result. And that biochemical process repeats in the same way that something like muscle memory does. Please correct me if I'm wrong. This is my understanding of it. Very, very lay understanding of it. Um, as a result, if you remove the memories of the trigger, there is a chance that the memories of the trigger are the things that actually allow that trigger to have power, and those are the things that resurface whenever PTS, uh, whenever a PTSD episode hits. But I'm... We would literally have to try to find it. We don't know enough about how the brain stores memory to do this, um, but if we could find a way to attack the brain's memory center and remove uh, the specific memory that led to it, I don't know if the brain would still have the same response because I don't know if the same part of the brain that is responsible for storing the memory is the part of the brain that is responsible uh, for the res uh, for the PTSD response. If it's the same part of the brain, removing that part uh, to, to get rid of the memory may actually fix the problem. But right now we don't have the tech to do so. And two, I don't... I, I, I'm fairly certain they don't come from the same region. So there's a chance that the trigger mechanism would not be removed from the region of the brain that causes the PTSD with or without the memory. Dragnaught says that it's a signal cascade from different parts. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's, if it's a signal cascade from different parts, then removing the memory probably won't actually fix it. Because if it's a different part of the brain, removing the memory will just remove the why but all the same feelings will be there. And arguably, that might make it worse. I I could be wrong, but I feel like not having access to the memory that caused it can make things worse because you lose the ability to rationalize yourself out of an episode. Uh, you lose the ability for other people to rationalize you out of an episode. So, you know, I, I, th I, think, that's, I think that's how it would work. I could be wrong. I'm not an expert. I would love to see if this is something that we can do in the future, but even then, this gets into a bit of human experimentation part, so you're going to have to get consent from individuals in doing so, and the stuff that they're going to have to consent to is possibly permanently damaging parts of their brain, especially their memories, which arguably is the thing that makes you you. This is a very dangerous area to meddle in. So, yes. So that would be an anxiety attack without knowing what caused it. More accurately, it would probably trigger fight or flight syndrome. Fair, but I do think that P so PTSD gets linked with anxiety pretty well. But I think in some in some episodes of PTSD, the uh, the symptoms manifest a little bit differently. Um, but on specifics, I would have to go. I see a 
Zarok Chaos did something, but I know not what it is. Uh, anywho, so you know that's a that's an interesting it's an interesting thought, Jake, and I would like to see a a day where we can actually try to put that into uh, into effect to see what happens. Again, the ethics of it confuse and scare me a little bit, uh, but maybe we'll have an answer to that in the near future. Who knows? Presenting, he's misrepresenting. Atheist crash now like just that. misremembers, which I can't hey, uh, understand. Hey, raging, hey, raging, All my good work for hey, not. Hey, raging, don't blame them. I pulled the pin and threw the grenade. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hey, John, I have not m- m- mistaken that fact. Um, I will hold you accountable. Oh, I see. <laughs> Here, here's my own. I see. Zarok Chaos is uh, notifying me that I finally fixed Streamlabs, <laughs> and he can send money through. So one, thank you for the ten dollars. Uh, two, yeah, no, I I was unaware for a long time as to the fact that my Streamlabs was broken. Only thing, man, if people are already getting evidence based treatment and they refuse you, you shouldn't keep pushing them. I, and I, I didn't push them. I, I didn't push them. They were victimizing themselves, and they were and they were falling into a victim mentality. Yeah, you don't. You and, don't well, no, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Getting- you can see that Aaron's already getting a little upset there. We have five dollars from Sysrenka. It's like with Alzheimer's, the memories are affected, but the emotions are not. It's why they're still angry after forgetting the episode. Fair. It's also probably one of the reasons why Alzheimer's patients, uh, yeah. when they are in an episode where they have forgotten uh, who you are, there's still a feeling of uh, familiarity in some cases. Um, I know that it's not terribly consistent. There's sometimes where it goes completely out of the loop and they think you're a total stranger. Uh, so different areas of the brain doing doing different wacky things. I know it's really insensitive to label Alzheimer's as wacky. I literally had an uncle that had it and it was through that and amongst other things that he took his life. So not wacky. That's an insensitive way to go about it, but still. Hello. Hi. I see that you have decided to join. Hi. How are you? What's up? I'm here to wash. I'm here to wash? Mm-hmm. For you to... Do you want to be able to listen? No, I don't want to listen to stupid. Oh. Well, Lamar, you're listening to me. Because I love... Oh, fair mm-hmm. enough. Um, More Emery's... subtle than he probably gives credit. Triggers are a serious thing they can be. Anything personally, kids' wagons. Took my baby cousin when he passed Transformers. Due to an... X, etc. Not that simple. Fair. We have a $10 super chat from em- from uh, Emery. More subtle than he probably gives credit. Triggers are a serious thing, and they can be anything personally. Kids' wagons. Maybe can do pass. Transformer- <clears throat> Transformers. It's not that simple. Yeah, fair. The brain is a complex and very, very <sighs> dangerous thing, honestly. Getting evidence-based treatment. Speak. That's Let me perfectly see. fine because no, more if often they're getting they're not, evidence they based, no, if they're getting atheist, the listen, all of listen, their symptoms listen, or listen, them listen. If people are getting evidence based treatment that is not working, it's not fucking working. Okay, so first thing we have a three dollar forty nine super chat. That's an odd number uh, from Gaelic Knox saying hi, Raz. Hello. You sound very down. I'm tired. It's been a long time. Maybe you should Maybe go lay down. No. No? No, I refuse while Aaron is the stress. Fair enough. Okay. So, the thing that was said right here uh, was that if evidence-based treatment isn't working, then he needs to do his stick, apparently. Uh, which is not evidence based because there's obviously ha- there obviously has to be a juxtaposition here. Also, Aaron specifically says, "Send me panda." <laughs> I just got comfy. Aaron, <laughs> hope you realize I'm kidnapping you to cuddles. All right, and I'm getting evidence based treatment. It takes different time periods for everybody. <laughs> And Everybody guess what? Um, what I'm offering, Aaron, is I said that I offer something better than the treatment that's offered in mainstream psychology and clinical counseling. That's- okay, so what we have here is a claim. What I'm offering is better than 
the mainstream treatment, which is the evidence-based treatment. He's off. He's offering something that is better than something that has shown results. Are they perfect results? No. This is a field that is not perfectly well understood. We are still working on it. We are still working through many of the kinks. But instead of working through that process and figuring out those kinks, Messenger Reveals here thinks that the best form is to say, eh, you know, that's not really working too well for you. Let's try mine. No. That's all I yeah, said. Uh, if I didn't I'll, have my I'll, 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 You can't say that until you have some evidence to back it up. Though. I don't I don't have to have evidence. You because... All right, guys. I, I want you to repeat in the chat what we have heard from Messenger Reveals right now in regards to his methods. What does he not need to have? What does he not need to have? <laughs> Everybody heard it, I'm sure. I don't need to have evidence. That is correct. Okay, so if he doesn't need to have evidence, then we don't need to believe shit. Because when we're dealing with something clinically, you have you can have a hypothesis with no evidence, right? You you can hypothesize something. Uh, but for that hypothesis to evolve into anything for you to be able to move that forward you need to start having some evidence usually demonstrated by repeated experiments that's the only way and, and the hypothesis itself doesn't really go away it never graduates to anything it just becomes a working cog in what then becomes a theory so for instance uh the theory of uh psychology would then include your hypothesis in its body of facts but Without the evidence, your hypothesis can never do that. It can never integrate into a larger theory. It just sits there as what is really no better than an assertion. So that's really awkward. <laughs> Don't be such an asshole skeptic, guys. And yeah, no, I and the the other thing is that when you when you have a hypothesis, the most important part of a hypothesis, the the seriously, the most important part of it is the null hypothesis. If you have your theory, you have your th uh, you have your thesis, you need to have the thing that is antithetical. You need to have the anti. Because if you say a hypothesis, you must be able to go, and it will be wrong if, like, hypothesis A can be proven wrong if scenario B, C, D, etc. Uh, are the case. Or if criteria A, B, C, D, or E happen to be met. If these criteria are not met, then falsification has not happened. You need a null hypothesis. This is the issue we have with several claims uh, that cannot be falsified. When you make any claim that cannot be falsified, then the claim gets thrown out. For instance, uh, this is the reason why science doesn't deal with God or gods. Because how would you falsify, evidentially, a god who exists outside of our dimension, as an example? Um, you can't, there is no actual null hypothesis. The only way you can disprove in a light sense any particular god is to see if that particular god happens to be logically inconsistent. But this is, again, completely contingent on that god existing in a dimension that comports to the same rules of logic as this one. So even then, it's not falsifiable by that criterion either. This is one of the reasons that the atheist versus theist debate has been going on for thousands of years. Um, sir, this means you're not proving your null, your null alternative. You're just showing that your null is unlikely given the observed results. A low p-value. Um, the only way is through coherency. Cohe but coherency uh, still leads us, to some, leads us to some issues. If we accept that a, that a god has to be uh has to comport in some way to what we deem as logic what we see as logical consistency then a god that violates that logical consistency therefore can be uh not necessarily disproven but at least shown to be unlikely um hello yumi how are you but what we have here with messenger revealed is he doesn't have a null hypothesis because he he says that he doesn't need evidence. If you don't need evidence, then I'd assume that you also don't have a fucking null hypothesis. 
Because every person that, every human so being that I've worked with is free from those things. Yeah, the fact you, that you, you don't want to. Totally you don't want to make time. You were just the a therapist you have for a year. You until don't you have make time. You until you make here. time. So so just until you make time. Here's some psychology for you guys. Everybody you make time. knows that Messenger reveals knows he doesn't have a cure for PTSD, but he's so ingrained in his argument that he's got to defend it no matter what. Yeah. And every no, time he's going to defend it, it no matter true. what. I'm fine with you believing what you want, but if people say no, you just gotta cut it out right now. Oh there. my god, I can't believe I'm on Facebook. Okay, so for anybody who's been on Raging Atheist channel before. I've been on there a few times. I enjoy his channel. However, when it comes to these type of discussions, I find that they can't actually yield fruit because they, they lack moderation. And, and even when he tries to moderate, it doesn't do terribly well because there's too many people in there. Some that's For some people, that's their bag. They enjoy it. And for me, not so much. I prefer smaller group discussions. I think that they yield fruit more often. I'm not talking about people saying that that yes or no, I'm willing to do it. I'm talking about people saying that it's impossible that it exists. It's just ignorance because people are not curious about what they believe. Wait, so if you're saying that a cure for PTSD, which currently does not exist, doesn't exist. Hold on, let me, re let me make sure. Yes or no, I'm willing to do it. I'm talking about people saying that it's impossible that it exists. Okay, saying that it's impossible for something to exist would be an ignorant claim, yes. But I don't think that that's the same thing that's been happening here. What's been happening here, from what I can tell, and please correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, you guys do a wonderful job at keeping me in check, it sounds to me more like people are saying this does not currently exist, we do not currently have a cure. That's very different. Also, uh, Jack and Quill with the $10. Hey, sirs, I just wanted to thank you. Uh, we're about to hear hey, the robot sirs, voice. I just wanted to say thank you. As someone who struggles with PTSD, I can't say how much it means when you bring this kind of nonsense to light. Both this guy and mental illness in general. Okay. Um, Jack and Quill said, Hey, Cyrus, just wanted to say thank you. As someone who struggles with PTSD, I can't say how much it means to me when you bring this kind of nonsense to light, both this guy and mental illness in general. Well, thank you very much for that, Jack and Quill. Also, Jack has very wonderful art. Just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, Jack and Quill also is the one who was responsible for the... Uh, when I did the Steven Anderson video uh, where he said he was gay, uh, Jack and Quill was the one who was responsible for the thumbnail for that particular one. Uh, so, yay. Um, that was cool. And I want to thank him very, mu very much for that since we're here. It's just ignorance because people are not curious about what they believe. So what I'm you not, don't not I'm I'm not I I Go ahead. Yeah, go, Chris. I'll, I'll okay. say my thing after. As someone who suffers PTSD. Nice. Go ahead. I'm going to say this. Anybody who says they, that they personally can offer a better treatment or a, be, or a better solution than what – and without evidence is ignorant of what is actually in the evidence-based psychological treatments. As evidenced by what? Wait a, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Hold on one fucking minute. How is it okay – for you to claim that your particular stance, your particular method, doesn't require evidence, but when somebody challenges you on it, they must meet their burden of proof and provide evidence. No, sir. No, sir. When you have the burden of proof, you must meet your burden of proof. When you make the affirmative claim, burdens on you to defend your claim. If you are not willing to do so, that's a problem. When somebody says that they don't believe your claim, burden of proof isn't on them. It's not the same thing. They have a burden of proof for their position, but they do not have a burden of proof in the conversation. In the conversation, you have an affirmative position. Not them. They have the negative. It is up to the positive to affirm their position. 
something Messenger has not been able to do in this conversation, and said that he doesn't need evidence, nor does he have it. Awkward. Very awkward. Also, we have a new uh, thingamajig. I need to go ahead and grab it. do to do to do to do to do to do to do Please forgive me, for I have sinned. We have a Lulu Cirrus. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, I play a lot of League of Legends, and Lulu is one of my favorite characters in League. So now we have Lulu Cirrus. Possibly one of the most terrifying things to think about if you know anything about Lulu. <laughs> that is actually a very terrifying thought. Just imagine if me, when frustrated with somebody, could turn them into a squirrel. We would not be living in a good world anymore. <laughs> oh, we really wouldn't. May I, may I say something? As somebody with PTSD that does require a service animal due to the severity and nature of my PTSD. Yeah. Because I have PTSD from, just to clarify, so everybody is aware, I have PTSD from a couple of different things, such as fighting in the Middle East... And being a victim of a crime. Very severe victim of a crime. So, we, we have established my PTSD. Um, and the reason I'm being very vague about that is it's, it's my own privacy. It's my own business. Totally um, fair. AR knows about it. So, I need a service animal for my PTSD. I, however, recognize that I am much better than I was previously using the evidence-based treatment. So. There's also a reason for that. For those who know Erin and her situation, one of the reasons that some of those things improved was that me and Raz went and took her out of the situation uh, that was causing a, some not all, some of the victimhood. Um, like, we, we actually went down to Florida, grabbed her, and brought her up here in order to protect her from that. So that's one of the reasons that she is a little better there. So j I'm, I'm throwing that out there not to toot my horn and say, Hi, I saved a person, woo! No, I'm, I'm doing that to point out that there's a reason that that happened, just in case what I hear is Messenger Reveals going, oh, look, the evidence didn't work, blah, 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 to who? So I'm just throwing that out there to make sure that that's the case. If you are claiming to have something better, I want the research. I want to see that it does work better. Because here's the thing. You are now trying to deal with somebody who loud noises, very sudden loud noises and gunshots, I shut down. Seeing pictures of the insides of ships, I shut down. It's not something you can sit there and go, I have a cure for this, because if you sit there and claim to have a cure for something without the evidence to back it up, what you are doing is you are giving people false hope, or you are giving people, and if they're not cured, it's false hope. And I believe the actual term that I've used for this before has been weaponized hope. I believe I've used this when I did my video with Aaron on celery juice. No, it was a uh, vitamin B17, I think, was when I first used that term on my channel. Uh, weaponized hope means using hope in order to gain something. Uh, you are using that hope as a tool, as a blunt instrument, or as a scalpel. And in doing so, uh, so for instance, what is the? there's usually a motive behind it. What it comes to vitamin B17, that motive is usually sales of some kind. When it comes to messenger reveals, the motive is getting people to accept his treatment. It is weaponized hope, and it is a disgusting thing. That said, we do have two super chats. One is from Sai Senkara. His arguments? Whack. His motives? Whack. Just whack. Uh, and I agree with that. 10 out of 10. We also have $2 from Kelly uh, Oodle, or O'Toole, or O'Toole. I'm really bad with names, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for doing the stream, and you are very welcome. Also, I see that Raging Atheist is in here. Raging, this is the thing that I, this is, this is part 
of the thing that I said I was going to do. Thank you very much for sending me the footage for this so that I could go over this. Or you are putting people in a position where they are sitting there and they're like, I could be cured. And if they're not cured, you lead to a higher risk of suicide. And this is actually something that is true because one of the worst things you can have is have your hopes dashed after maintaining them for a while. We have high suicide rates for people with depression and PTSD for a reason. And when they think that everything's fine and then they get triggered again five, six years down the road, that episode usually ends up being more violent than the ones that they had in quick succession, one from another, because a long period of time thinking that this is not a thing you're going to have to deal with anymore, it can be absolutely crippling when this happens years down the road. Uh, my anxiety hadn't been raised in about mm, year and a half, two years, and the first anxiety attack that I had uh, about a couple weeks ago, it felt worse than some of the ones that I had had before, because before with my anxiety attacks... Uh, what I would do is I would I, I have a grounder, I would clutch the grounder, and I had almost a ritual that I would go through. Oh, I'm going through an anxiety attack. Allow me to go through step A, B, C, and D in order to curb myself and protect myself. I wasn't in the same position when I had an anxiety attack uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, so it was it was much harder for me to handle because it had been a while. It sucks, but these things also suck. That said, um, Quessa with the 5,000 uh, saw this guy at the Greater Debate Community channel. First time I've seen someone claim themselves to be a prophet. Yeah, that's another weird thing that I'm, I'm going to try to get into if I can. As a veteran, there's already 22 military veterans a day that commit suicide. That's I false not... statistics, just so you know. Can he prove it? Yes. <laughs> How? Okay, because, check check this out. I this is this is going to be interesting. Show if me you, the if, because if you go out there to if you go out to to the to the internet and you type in twenty two suicides a day by veterans, I did a research project based on this in my twenty in was it twenty thirteen. It is false information why they came up with the twenty two suicides a day because if you came up with twenty two suicides a day and multiplied by by three hundred fifty six, you would eliminate almost all the veterans within three years. All right, so we have a claim. Who's ready to put the skeptic goggles on? Because when we have the skeptic goggles on, we get to do really interesting things. So I'm going to open up calculator. Bum da dee dum dum dum. Here's calculator. Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead and say we're going to go ahead and use his numbers and his method, right? So. He says that we'd eliminate all the military veterans, almost all, almost all. We'll say 80%. Is that good? This number must equal about 80%. You know what? 60%. This number must equate to at least 60%. Just a little more than half of the military veterans in the United States in order to get us to the number that we need for his claim to work, right? We're being really fucking liberal with these numbers. We're being really, really gracious. So, three years is his claim. So we're going to multiply that 22 by 356. 7,832 people would be dead by the end of year one. Multiply that by three. 23,000 people. 20, you know what? Fuck it. 24,000. We'll round it up. We'll be really gracious. 25,000 people would be dead in three years under the statistics of 22 deaths a day. Now, let's do another thing. We're going to do how many military vets in the United States. So, would you like to tell me how many times the number 24,000? Remember, we need 60%. We need 60%. Because that is at least most, right? 51%. We'll just do 1% over. If this number is 1% over 50, we've technically hit most military veterans are dead. Because we're over half. 51% is a bigger number. It's bigger than 49. Let's go with that. All right. 
We're going to go ahead and drag. 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 Holy shit, that's a big number. That's a big number. 18.2 million. All right, so 18.2 million. So we're going to go ahead and call this number a nice round 24,000. 18. Let's go ahead and make it just 18 million. We got 18 million here divided by 24,000. How many years will it take for all these people to be dead? He said three. Math says 750. It's bad when second grade math proves you wrong. It, it, it's bad that second grade math proves you wrong. It would take 750 years for all the veterans to be dead. Let's go ahead and divide that by 2 because we wanted to get our 51%. And dividing this by 2 will get us our roughly 51%. 375. How many years did he say? Three? Minus three. 372. For the most liberal, generous estimate of 51%. <laughs> for that estimate, for most military veterans to be dead by suicide. We need at least 372 years. And this is with the most gracious use of numbers. We've done everything to put the argument in his favor. Every single thing. And no, Oz, it does not take into account that veteran numbers increase year to year. There are new veterans every year. People retire all the time, from the military at least. Huh. Like, really? Really, dude? Second grade math. Actually, first grade math. I learned my multiplication tables in first grade. I could have done this first grade. Wow. I'm lisping, guys. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no. I, we, I I could have done this math in the first grade. Oddly enough, when I was a young Earth creationist. So, this is weird. This is awkward. We seem to be um, a couple generations away from your previous estimate. Just a few. Just a few. So, uh, yeah. So, if we think that his math is correct, please press G in the chat. If we think that his math is horribly fucking wrong, please press H. Let's go ahead and get it. Let's go ahead and get a poll in the chat. Let's do it, guys. Oh, boy. That's a lot. We're, we're here, guys. We're in very H territory. Very, very H. Boom. That's where we are. Okay, now, let's go ahead and knock that out. We are done with that segment of this argument. Let's continue. So, the, 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 the statistic... Also, why not F? Uh, because you don't need to pay your respects yet. We're not done ruining this man's career is not a factual statistic. Not a factual statistic. Not a factual statistic. 372 years off the mark. Not a factual statistic. 372 years off the mark. Okay. Come on, man. Come on. You obviously don't know his stats. Oh, boy. <laughs> Brian, misuse of statistics. Hmm. 
<laughs> if it's not a factual statistic, then it's wrong. Yeah, no, a statistic doesn't exist without a base of facts. It's like, that's not a factual scientific theory. I mean, you're right in that the theory isn't a fact. The theory's actually a model with a bunch of facts. I'm just telling you it's not. It's bullshit for me, because there's new veterans that come in every single year, right? Like, Yeah. I okay, so the first thing uh, we need to get into... Hold on. I need to make sure that I've got this ready. We have, again, from the wonderful Jack and Quill... This is why, and it's going to stay that way. This is very PTSD, and it's going to stay that way. But you can live a happy life. Okay, cool. So it's very hard for me to read it, but I think I can. Yeah, this is very PTSD, and it's going to stay that way. But you can live a happy life, and I love you all. That is from Jack and Quill. As for usual, thank you very much, Jack and Quill. We have one more thing to provide in the uh, fan art section here. Let's go ahead and drop this in here and see if it will play on here. This is from Jake3D. Very H. Very H. I think we're going to go ahead and just... Boom. Boom. We're going to hold on to that. We're going to hold on to that one. That's going to be useful. Kitty is good, Kitty. Hey, sirs, you messed up with your math earlier. It would actually take uh, 1,120 years. Oh, so he's even he's, so he's even more wrong. Great. <laughs> but thank you for correcting me. I'm no, there's not new veterans, veterans in because... We've, the, the, there's not new veterans in. There's not new veterans. What? The amount yeah, of veterans. The, the amount of veterans was more for... popular. No, the the amount of veterans coming into population was more prevalent in the 70s, 80s, and 90s than it was in the 2000s and 2010s. So what does that? The, the claim. There's new veterans coming in. The response to the claim. Uh, we had more veterans in the 80s. Okay, that that doesn't mean that there aren't new veterans coming in. That's what we call a non sec. That, that's what, actually it's a red herring, because that argument is a distraction. It has nothing to do with this shit. It has nothing to do with this. As for Y, G, and H, uh, it was completely arbitrary. 10 out of 10, very arbitrary. Uh, also, Mike MC with the $2 as an Iraq vet with PTSD. Yeah. Fuck this guy. That is all. That's uh, not all. We could do a lot more than that. Uh, that's what the stream is for. But thank you very much for the $2 super chat. I really do appreciate it. Sir, if the error occurred when you multiplied by 3 and then divided, this created your 350 in context of 3 year units. 3 times 350 is about... Oh, okay. Fair enough. So we're receiving less veterans in twenty in the twenty in the two thousands and the twenty tens than we ever did before that. I would just like no, to see your math. That's all. It's not about the math. Go on. He's precious, ain't he? That's fucking precious. Not about the math. <sighs> Bitch, the math is the only thing that matters. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Do your research. I'm telling you, it's there. 
do your research. I'm telling you it's there. It's not about the math. The math just proves I'm wrong. Yeah, Listen, and, I really need to get you and on a one-on-one. That's the person one, making the claim. You need to provide you, the No, no, she made the assertion that 22 military veterans are committing suicide today, and I said it's I, not correct. I'm about correct. to pull up the veteran affairs yeah. suicide. See, she can pull up evidence, but you're not pulling up any. Uh, I, yeah, you, 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 you give me the VA's website, which is the .gov website, and I'll subscribe to it. <sighs> give me a .gov website from the VA. Even if that's the case, you know, here. But da, 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 da. VA reveals its veteran suicide statistics. An average of 20 veterans die every day by suicide. That's fucking awkward in both reports the VA said an average of 20 veterans succumb to suicide every day in the newest version VA is more specific the report shows 20.6 suicides a day of those 16.6 for veterans and 3.8 for active duty service members guardsmen and reservists the amount this amounts to 6,132 veterans the VA's 2012 report states 22 veterans succumb to suicide every day a number that is still often cited incorrectly. The number also included active duty troops, guard, and reserve. Okay, cool. So the number 60, the number technically, I guess, would be closer to 16 or 17 than 22. Congratulations, you have five less deaths a day. That's still a lot of fucking suicides. That is plenty of suicides to be alarmed over. Hell, one is a problem. Just one suicide is an issue. If just one is one we can handle and deal with and actually maybe prevent, then that's an issue. But that's a number in the thousands either way. Jesus! Yay, and I'll subscribe to it because everything you're going to pull up is not .gov. Which Carl, is the VA? I'm a veteran. I'm a veteran. I know. So, so what do you think is the suicide rate? He's a veteran. He knows. Do 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 do. Allow me to do three seconds of research. Something this guy couldn't be fucking worried to do at all. To view and download the updated report below. Okay. So what we have here the updated report. Allow me just a moment to find the actual fucking part. Because if you're going to do the skeptic thing, you may as well do it right. All right, guys. So we said that by our math, by that math, the number should sit uh, somewhere in the two thousand, in the uh, six thousand per year range, right? Cool. This is for mentalhealth.va.gov. This is the actual report. This is the physical data, and the physical data shows about six thousand deaths per year, an average twenty-five million going down. At least you got one thing right. There are fewer veterans per year. Woo. Not like that means anything. But these numbers right here seem to be entirely consistent with what we said. So we have an average of 6,000 deaths per year. That gets us to about 16 and a half deaths per day, which is consistent with what we expected. 16 and a half deaths per day plus the four deaths per day uh, that we would have from the active service members would get us closer to that 20 variable that we used before. Again, these numbers are entirely fucking accurate. Adding five to the body count does not suddenly make all those fucking veterans go extinct, my dude. It really doesn't. But the math doesn't matter, right? The math doesn't matter. Because if the math matters, then we might have had a problem. According to Message Reveals, the math doesn't matter. Fine. 
then we've got the statistics right here. We, we, we have them. We have the numbers. They're right here from the website that he specifically requested. From the source that he said he needed. It is, it is right here. Literally, right in front of my face. Two seconds of time. A thing that he claims he's researched and done an entire report on is something that was literally a Google search away. And it took no time. I did it while chatting with you guys. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Dude. You're so bad at this. You are so atrociously bad at this. How do you get so bad at doing reports that you claim to have done a report and all the numbers from a Google search from the source you required refute your conclusions on the report? How? How do you get yourself into a situation where it takes a three-second Google search to disprove what you're saying, and you're claiming that you have a report, and that's the thing that makes you well worth your time? That's the thing that means we should be respecting you. <laughs> Jake says, okay, statistics and math, but show me evidence. Bruh, this is, this is at least the evidence that he's wrong. This is at least the evidence that he either hasn't done a fucking report, or the report that he did was bollocks. Also... Uh, thank you very much for the second $2 donations with the exact same statement, Jake. It just posted twice. It just posted twice. That's weird. Let's continue. We have so many more wonderful avenues to walk down. Hey, Messenger. Because, I mean, this war in Iraq was horrible, and we do have, like, very serious documented cases of very serious PTSD okay, from this so, war. So, so let's talk about PTSD, and let's talk about the severity of PTSD. Let's not talk about a false statistic like 22 persons. And a false statistic that just fucking got crammed up your ass, my dude. Come on now. Come on. Really? Really? Okay. Sure. And let's do the 22 push-ups a day crap that has Carlton, gone on in social media. Well, I, I don't Carlton think it's a false statistic until you can prove it's an actual false statistic. It is. Statistic. Really, somebody, what what Carlton, I want to know is what is your statistic? What is the number um, that you Carlton, would get? Carlton in, in the chat actually put up a VA doc of uh, report that says not 22, oh, look, 20. Oh, look, somebody else did the math, too. Somebody else found the same shit I did. It took them about as long. It's almost like anybody can do this shit. Veterans commit suicide a day, which I'm pretty sure would still, like, work with your math or whatever. It is not but, even uh, 20. I'm telling you, it, it's not but, 20. We just posted a .gov website. You, you told us 30 yeah. seconds ago that you would take it if it was from a .gov website, and this is from a .gov website, so now you're backtracking on us. Because I'm not backtracking. But the, yes, you are! They provided the... Remember how we talked about the null hypothesis earlier and why it's important? Okay, let's go ahead and create something real quick. Let's do a thought experiment because I love when situations like this happen because they make wonderful teaching tools. All right, so we're going to go ahead and say that this ocarina right here, this guy, you know, this guy right here, this is my hypothesis, right? To destroy this hypothesis, I need a null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis is met, the ocarina is destroyed. I'm not going to actually break this thing. This I, I like this guy, even though I'm horrible at fucking playing it. But, so, to falsify this, I need a null hypothesis. If you can provide me a statistic that is from a .gov website, the VA website specifically, then my claim that the numbers are wrong would be falsified, and the ocarina must be destroyed. Let's go ahead and say that the null hypothesis is plushy cirrus. Okay? This is my assertion. This is my hypothesis. This is my null hypothesis. 
in a world where the null hypothesis is true, the hypothesis must be dropped or modified. We, we, we've shown very thoroughly that real Cirrus does in fact exist. Therefore, the null hypothesis is here. It, the, the null hypothesis is a very here. Therefore, you must drop the assertion. Don't worry, I dropped it into my other hands. It's not breaking. So we found ourselves in a world where it took, it took a random person in the chat 20 seconds, 25 seconds? To find the information for the, that meets the criteria for the null hypothesis. Weird. What a weird world we live in. Um, Mike can see with the $2.22 is a huge thing in the military. It's real. And then $2 from Sai Senkra. Top five bruh moments. Also, new fan art is in the DC. I have the new fan art in there. Uh, it is from Bill Sai, and it is Tom Suris. Woo! We only have evidence for the alternative or ref, uh, or retain the null. Well, yeah, and evidence, and we happen to have real Cirrus right here, so we retain this null. We retain it. If it turns out that the null hypothesis is the case, the hypothesis must be dropped because the hypothesis cannot simultaneously be the case whilst the null hypothesis is the case. So you're correct. We do retain the null. What I'm trying to get at, and what I was trying to get at earlier, is that if people are receiving evidence-based treatment and they tell you they don't want to get it, it's not you. It's not up to you to tell them that they're living in a victim mentality. That's bullshit. They're... This living in a victim mentality thing is the same shit Jordan Peterson tries to say. It's it's not that people are, are harmed. It's that when thing when bad things happen to people, they allow those things to control them. They allow them to control their minds. When that happens, people find themselves in a loop of victimhood. That's the same fucking shit JP does. They're trying people to living in, people living in a victim mentality is this. People who believe there's not something better than what they have. There is something better than what they have. In fact, it's one of the reasons why we went and grabbed someone who needed to be rescued out of their situation so that they could have something better than their situation. That's the whole reason we did that rescue mission. This is this is not this is not new. This is people to assume that somebody suffering from PTSD does not want things to get better is to assume something really fucking dumb. That's what I'm talking about. But so every single, single person on this planet lives with a victim mentality in some form or the, another. Every single that's one a, of us. That, but that's an yeah. issue, Knock. And, and, and the reason that it's an issue is because if people don't heal and grow and change within, regardless of what's happened to them, and believe me, for the stuff that happened, hold on. And believe me, from the things that have happened to me in my youth and in my childhood and while I was in the military, I could sit there and for sure play the victim mentality as well. So you literally just shat on every military veteran that has PTSD. Every single one. Every person with childhood trauma that has PTSD. You've just shat on them as well. I managed to do better. Okay, that's neat. Unfortunately, things like psychological help are not one-size-fit-all gloves. You're literally putting the responsibility for the damage that victims have suffered on the victims and solely on the victims. That's not a good thing. And honestly, if you are trying to help somebody, the last thing you can do is to say how you're feeling is your fault. There is a measure of control that you have over your environment, but there's a measure of control that your environment has over you. And you sometimes do not have complete uh, ability to maintain the measure of control that either of those things have. Sometimes your environment will take hold of you. It sucks, but it'll happen. Sometimes you are in complete control over you and your environment. It's nice when that happens, but it's not all the time. 
However, because of the changes that I've gone through in the last 13 and a half years, I was empowered to become something more than I could have become because I focused on me. All right. So what we have here is somebody who is saying that the hardship in their life helped them become a better person. That's neat. There are PTSD victims whose hardship in their life have built them up to be stronger individuals. But the PTSD didn't go away. I That's great. On uh, me. I, I agree That's with great. that 100%. Empower, empowerment is something that they teach you when you're going through... Uh several different types of but therapy. empowerment is not saying that i'm always going to be somebody who's suffering from x mm, actually if you let if you give somebody the ability to understand that there's a reality of their situation that they must grapple with you will always be suffering from ptsd as an example until we happen to find a cure one day we might we do not currently have one then that can give them the ability to actually come to grips with their situation and learn how to deal with it. When I started having anxiety attacks, the thing that helped me deal with them was not trying to figure out a way for them to go away. It was figuring out a way to cope with them as they existed. It was coming to terms with the fact that the way that my brain worked 10 years ago is not the way that it works now for much worse it worked much better before but it doesn't now coming to terms with that helped me a lot it helped me uh, change my habits in a way that allowed me to deal with my anxiety the anxiety never went away it resurfaced again a couple years later what are you gonna do but you can't just say that oh well if the victim changed their mental state then things would be fine it's not always a thing that can be done and well, that's the, and that's what your therapist here's, from what here's you something said that you're not you. realizing. Here's something that you're not realizing in the what? in that group of research that I uh, brought to the table during our debate. It has the uh, statistics for the success of various different kinds of evidence-based treatment. And what you'll find is with a vast majority of people after they've gone through the course of therapy is they don't have relapses in their symptoms. Also, we do have another fan art from uh, PS Toxic. Uh, which is the Cirrus going, my precious. It's my precious H. It's a very precious H. No hurt the H. Uh, or their symptoms are reduced to such an amount that they can live perfectly normal lives that and uh their ptsd doesn't affect them to such a severe degree How, there's three now things. of course, of course the, i'm not finished of course <laughs> there's going to be outliers like some people like aaron they are with the fucking a, clap uh, you know their service animal to help them throughout the day and i i don't see their that that i don't see anything there's wrong not with a that. whole lot of research on service animals even though they're being employed more who got a claim again There's not a whole lot of research with service animals. All right. Animal assisted therapy research and findings from uclahealth.org. He, he accepts orgs. Um, for mental health, the act of petting an animal releases automatic relaxation response. Humans interacting with animals have found that petting the animal promoted the release of serotonin, lowered anxiety, and helps people relax, provides comfort, reduces loneliness, increases mental stimulation, assists in recall of memories, and help of sequen uh, and help sequence temporal events in patients with head injuries or chronic diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, can provide an escape or happy distraction, can act as catalyst in the therapy process, May May help break the ice, may help reduce the initial resistance that may accompany therapy. For physical health, lowers blood pressure and improves cardiovascular health, reduces the amount of medications some people need, breathing slows in those who are anxious, releases many hormones such as phenylethamine, which has the same effect as chocolate. Yum. Diminishes overall physical pain. Relax more during exercise. Participants were motivated and enjoyed the therapy sessions more. For children with autism, many children with autism feel a deep bond with animals and feel they are able to relate better than humans. Do, 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 do. 
<laughs> from uh from Sai Srenka for two dollars. Boy Johnny, your mom lets you have two claims. <laughs> oh boy. Uh all right, animal assisted therapy. Animal assisted therapy in patients hospitalized with heart failure. That research was done in two thousand seven. It is in the AJCC. Uh, health benefits from animal assistance interventions. That's from the Contemporary Health Practice Review, 2007. Children with Autism and Therapy and Dogs in Social Interactions. That's from 2010 in the Journey for Society and Psychological Anthropology. Uh, dementia and Animal Assistance Therapy. That's in 2003. That's from the American Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and Other Dementias. Dogs Ease Anxiety. Improve Health of Hospitalized Heart Failure Patients. American Heart Association Abstract 2513. We have the benefits of animal-assisted therapy in hospital ICUs. That is from 2018. That's very recent research. Need I go on? Sh sh do, I do I have to go on? Like, I recognize that some of the stuff isn't necessarily straight with service animals. This is all animal-assisted therapy. A lot of this has to deal with mental therapy, which is what we're fucking talking about. Is this... It... Do, do I need to go on at this point? Because, like, I feel like I should. <sighs> Seriously. It's, it's mind-boggling. <sighs> I'm also doing a little bit of research into... Okay, so this is the ADA stuff there. Do 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 do. You know. Point point in case. Point in case. Or case in point rather. There is plenty of evidence to suggest that service animals in just the emotional health capacity. This is untrained animals. This is just a pet, basically. Help and therapy. Just that. But we can train animals to do more. We can train a service animal to notify an individual when you have a panic attack, when you faint. We can train a service animal to catch you if you were to fall from an episode of POTS. We can train a service animal to notify people around you. We can train a service animal to administer things that will help you in case in points of need. We can even train service animals to recognize when you are having a panic attack or a PTSD episode, even in your sleep. So... Where the fuck are you getting this shit from? Like, really? Really? What are what what data does he have? Oh right, none. Because evidence doesn't matter. Because that's exactly what he said. He didn't need evidence. Hmm. Weird. And yeah, no, the whole argument literally is just bootstraps. Yeah, get down, buckle your bootstraps. Your PTSD will go away if you buckle your bootstraps. That's the stupidest fucking thing. It's literally just uh, conservatism 101. That's it. That's all it is. That's all it is. Speaking of, this is an animal that can recognize that I'm upset. And since I'm upset, she's here and trying to comfort me, as she do. But, you know, there's not a whole lot of research on them. There's nothing to suggest that they can help. In a situation like this, absolutely nothing. Nothing's here. Sai Stranka says ignorance is a hell of a drug. Yeah. Thank you for the $2. Sirs, that's the fallacy of proper evidence. Oh, boy. Or in clinical counseling than ever before. But there's not even full research we're, on we're, we're not talking. We're not talking. 
but there's not even full research. Well, there's not even full research on some of the drugs that we're using to try to help with, uh, with depression. But you know what's allowing us to do that research? People employing these things and us actually gathering data from that and moving forward. Thank you, Yumi. You're helpful. You're a good bean. I have a service animal, because I have to have a service animal, not even just for my PTSD, for my pots, but are we going to sit there and say that it's... No, I'm just saying, I'm just telling you that there's not research to support the efficacy of it, even if... There's not research to support the efficacy of a thing that actually fucking works. What? Dude. How do you, how do you get to a point in your life where evidence isn't necessary, research that has been done is not enough for you, and evidence-based treatment is bad? How how do you how do you get a point how, how do you get to a point where that's the case? Like th this is the whole conspiracy mindset thing where uh oh yeah the modern medical world must must have some agenda against actual results uh therefore uh the evidence-based treatment isn't going to help assuming assuming that's the case but you know whatever if it's beneficial to you that's all i'm saying there there is actually a lot of research to denote the efficacy of a service animal for conditions such as pots epilepsy and diabetes yeah. And mobility. Well, we're talking about we're talking about PTSD and depression. Right? Yeah, she 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 said to denote the efficacy of a service animal for conditions such as pots, epilepsy, and diabetes. Okay, she did. And mobility. Well, we're talking about we're talking about PTSD and depression. Right? So, um, if you are having a depressive episode. One of the chemicals that is not firing or being received correctly in your brain is serotonin. And petting an animal literally releases serotonin. This, 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 it literally helps release the happy drug. It literally helps release the happy drug. What the fuck? <laughs> you literally... Like this, this little bean right now, by being here and letting me letting me pet her, is literally helping me release the happy drug. Now, obviously, there's an issue where sometimes your brain is not firing enough serotonin, and in other times, the serotonin receptor on the other end of the brain is not functioning correctly. If you fire more serotonin there, it can get bottlenecked, and that's an issue. But still, given that these are both things that can happen then in some cases, the animal can help. Like, it's just... It's the happy drug! It literally gets released from petting! Anxiety. Anyways, to finish off what I was trying to say earlier, we know that people can have a full reduction in symptomology. They can basically be cured under your definition, which is not meeting the requirements of the DSM-5. We know that, uh... DSM-5 does not have anything to do with treatment, just so you know. I, I know that. Uh, so I, I, you... DSM-5 does not have anything to do with treatment, but his definition of cure is a lack of symptoms, and the DSM-5 has lists of symptoms. So his definition of cure actually relies very heavily on the DSM-5. It relies very heavily on it. As a source no, no, I, as a I, treatment. I, I, I'm, I'm using your, using your, I'm using your, using your argument here. You can't like, use my... Literally what I just fucking said. No, 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 no. The only because time I ever brought up the DSM, the only time, the only time I brought up the DSM a, a, five a, a, was to talk about people who you are like. Okay, so I've noticed a thing that's happening here. The only tool that Messenger Reveals actually has here is is of the red herring. There is no research for the advocacy of service animals, or not enough research. Aaron brings up a point that they're actually very helpful in a multitude of scenarios, some physical, some psychological. He goes, okay, yeah, but we talking about PSTD right now. Or PTSD. Like, yes, we are. But your claim, number one, didn't hinge on PTSD, now did it? 
So to bring up the PTSD as a counter to her counter to your claim is a fucking red herring. Has nothing to do with this. Yes, it is the conversation you're currently having. But when you bring it up there, you are literally just trying to distract away from the fact that you just got hit. It's also a goalpost move. Is very much a goalpost move at that point. And on top of that, we have it happening here again, where he says the DSM has nothing to do with cure, but his definition of cure is no symptoms. Then the DSM has everything to do with cure at that point. Even though his definition of cure doesn't function, his definition of cure requires the DSM because it has the list of symptoms that we would go through. But you know, he doesn't need evidence though, right? Right. He doesn't he doesn't he doesn't need evidence. Most. You said in the past that in order to tell if somebody is cured from PTSD, all they have to do is not meet the requirements of the DSM-5 diagnosis anymore. Correct. <laughs> he knows he's doing it. He knows it. This He knows that's what he's doing. Okay, perfect. Now we're on the same page because that's what I was just explaining. I don't know why you're rebuting that. Because you were using it as a, as a form of how it's assessed for, for how people are cured from it, which is assessment. But his form of assessment for cure is congruent with uh, being asymptomatic. Even though asymptomatic is not the same thing as cured. Uh, to demonstrate why this is the case... We're aware of, of what the concept of a carrier is when dealing with a disease, right? A carrier does not have to show symptoms. A carrier could be not suffering from the thing at all, but still, in fact, have the disease. It works the same here. Asymptomatic is not the same thing as cured. It's still there. I'm sorry, I said under your minutes. definition of the word cure. Now you're putting words in my mouth, man. Come on. You're better than this. No, it's not about me and the yeah. cure. It's basically saying, because you're talking about a difference between remission and being under, under, I said under your definition of the word cure. We really David. needed you here, messenger. My, early my, my definition of the word cure is this. Those who no longer meet symptomology and no longer are triggered by the things that they once were. Okay, so that's redundant. Because if they no longer have the symptomology it would be entailed that they're no longer triggered by the things that they once were because the triggering is in fact one of the symptoms that we would have. So this is redundant. This, this, is, this has not, no reason being there. So we're just functionally dealing with the symptomology. So his definition of cure is asymptomatic. But asymptomatic is not a definition of cure we use for any fucking thing. It's not. Perfect. Period. I could not show symptoms of anxiety for 10 years. Hell, I already didn't show them for fucking two. And then they just immediately come back. The anxiety never went away. I didn't lose it and then gained it again. It never went. It never left. I just didn't show any symptoms. Like, I hate how many times I've had to use this before, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it again. In a situation like this, I can only say that this is really simple for everybody but him. Cool. That's that's exactly what that's I said. That's not that's well, not even the DSM. Think, it has I nothing to do main, with the DSM. I think the main anyway. issue and my main issue, and, I, and me and you have spoken about this, messenger, is I, I, I truly screen. believe I that like you think that this second. is legit. Oz says I'm testing something. You owe me two dollars. What are you testing, Oz? Legitimate cure. Um. So so do have you more put in the the peer review research. Um. Prove that this is a cure. So. Everybody can can benefit from it. Like like I said, the girl I've spoken of many times, one of the great loves of my life. You know, I she has PTSD. I would fucking love for her to be cured. Maybe then we could actually be happy together. But she's so fucking fragile, and 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 her last marriage just just ruined her so much that we can't even have a chance of being together. I would love for that to happen. I but would. I need that cure. Anyways, I'm not sitting here saying I wouldn't. Anyways. However, comma, I want peer-reviewed research being part of my treatment. 
because that's something I personally need to make myself feel more comfortable about a situation where I am taking care of my body. It is the same fecking thing I would have for my Eller Stanlos, my HNPP, or any other condition that, int that add to my depression. When it comes to my physical health, I want peer-reviewed research. When it comes to my mental health, I want the same damn thing. So when you go to your therapist, do you ask them for the research by which they're pro providing therapy to you? I'm sorry if you guys heard really loud noise when I did that, but I wanted you guys to at least in some way, shape, or form feel the same pain that I felt right there. If she's going to apply the same standard to a therapist that she would to a doctor, then at, you don't ask a doctor for all the peer-reviewed research for what they're doing. You trust that they have done the research because it's their fecking job. Also, thank you very much for the 199 Super Chat Forensic Ayat. F in chat for service of sanity. Agreed. But, when dealing with this, we got, we got, a, we got a weird thing. Weird thing here. You don't ask the doctor for the peer-reviewed research for every single treatment they're going to do. You just accept that they have done the research and trust that they, being the expert who's responsible for your care, will apply it. This is the same thing you do when you're dealing with a therapist. You trust that they've done their research and so that they can do what their expertise leads them to do. This is the reason that they got their degree. It's the reason that you did not go get your degree. Well, you might have a degree in it. I'm not saying that you don't. But you trust that their efforts were not in vain in pursuing their degree and doing their research. And so you're going to let them apply that in order to help you. It's how you do it for doctors. It's how you do it for therapists. Now, you could ask what are the studies that they use to conclude certain things so you can do some research yourself, and that's fine. I encourage people to do all the research. Do everything. Like, literally, if you if you want to understand something, then, you know, go to the source, do some research, see what you can find. But here he's asking her to not apply the same standard but to apply a different standard. But he makes it sound like it's the same. But we all know that's not the case. Yes, I actually do. And, and what specific therapy did they sit there and hold to as far as their treatment methodology for you? They go by cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. Almost everything, in, the almost everything in postmodern therapy is, is assigned to cognitive behavior therapy, no different than what I offer. The fact that the terminology is consistent between the two is not the same thing as the actual effects being the same. Also, Jake, uh, Jake3D in the chat says their degree and accreditation license is the proof. In many cases, yes. Unless, of course, you're somebody like Georgia from fucking AIG. It's completely different than what you offer. It isn't They're completely different. It, it is completely different. The fact that you're using the same... So the fact that you use the same fancy words, if I'm going to go ahead and go go Southern here for a second, y'all are both using the same fancy words, but y'all are meaning something completely different. What we see here is that the same terminology is being used, but its usage isn't exactly ubiquitous amongst the, the two disciplines. In the one discipline, we have Messenger Reveals, who I can only assume, from the research that I've done on the guy, uh, that he's offering something that's very theistic and therefore not something that will really actually help all that much. And what Aaron is talking about is something that's medical and psychological and, again, very different. But, you know, whatevs. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Okay, desensitizing. They're desensitizing me 
to the triggers so that I am no longer set off to a position where I am flashing back and incapable of being able to pull myself out of these flashbacks and am in dangerous situations. And in which methods are they using desensitization? Are they using it on a cognitive level or are they using it on an experiential level where they're doing the exposure therapy? See, here's an interesting thing. That's my business. I can't tell you they are desensitizing me. I don't want to go into the rest of it because here's the thing. That leads you into knowing what the full extent of my trauma is. So let me tell you, let me tell you from my perspective, rage, atheist rationale, let me speak to Aaron real quick. That's irrelevant. Well, well, to Aaron. Let's Aaron, not go into personal let me speak issues. To, let That's me, all I ask messenger. I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak to her about personal stuff. All right. So, when, when, uh, but you just asked for it. When, when I sit that, when I, when right I talk now, to people, Aaron, atheist rationale, when I speak to anybody, when I talk to them one-on-one -on -one about empowerment and growth and healing and managing emotions, I don't need to know the history. I don't need to know the details. All right. Okay. So, my dude, did you just say that in therapy, you don't need to know the things that led to your client requiring therapy? You, you, you don't need to understand the things that your individual client suffered that led them to require your therapy. That's That's your claim? That's that that's your fucking claim? Okay. Tad of philosophy uh with $2 he sounds like the worst self-help book ever. He feels like the worst self-help book ever. <laughs> Jake 3D, you got cancer, doesn't matter if it's brain or toe, you just need Jesus. Yeah, no, we just need to know that you got a problem. We'll fix it with the Jeebus. Oh, oh. boy. Okay, so I've been to a psychiatrist. They ask you to reveal these things so that they can better understand what you've gone through, so they can better understand how to help you. And a therapist will do very similar. It's the responsible thing to do. They're not going to say that you must tell them, but it really does help. As a mental health worker, I'd never even dream of peddling this kind of BS. I give my clients evidence-based advice. Workers are careful. Michelle for the $5. Thank you very much. And Dragnots for the $2. I'm not so nice when I jump into the conversation with him. Because once I give, pe once I give people a framework for how to view themselves, how to view others, and how to view the world. Once you tell people how to think. World around them in a healthy way which is what the world does not teach us to do, which is why we're susceptible to the symptomology that we receive that's clinically diagnosed. That's the problem. When we have a healthy outlook for ourselves and others in the world, we heal, we grow, and we're free from the bullshit that once bound us. So that the bullshit that once bound us. That's a really good way of glossing over the complications of trauma. It's a really, really, uh, forgive my language here, bullshit way of just glossing over trauma. That leaves me a question. Can you go through getting shot, watching your Marine buddy die, and then sitting there in your face and then be like, oh, I can just get past this. Or you can be tied up to a fucking chair, forced to watch porn while you're raped. And you can say you can get past that. Could I now? Yes. Could I when I was 25, 30? No.
Dude. You really just said, now that I'm older, I can get over rape just fine. You literally fucking did that. Oh, my God. We're at this point, guys. We're at this point. We're at this point. Just this. You know what? No. I still remember he said that. It's still there. Huh. Funny. I can't seem to forget the fucking bullshit he just said. Let me try a few more times. I still remember. Okay. I still remember every fucking thing he said. And that's a problem. Because the fact that I won't be able to unremember that is not only evidence against his claim. But it also puts me in a really awkward situation where I'm in a perpetual state of anger. What a fucking revelation. Thank you for the two dollars, Kim, uh, Kim Demarest. Cool. This is less than five years ago for me. Both of these. Okay, but it wasn't based on time. It was based on revelation of understanding my myself and how to become a healthier version of myself, so that I was not so so that so so that, I, so that I was not a slave to the bullshit of humanity that we all exist within. This is mind over matter. That's all this fucking is. Is just mind over matter. Let me say what he said in fewer words. And one, it'll be more coherent. And two, it'll maybe explain why this whole thing is absolute horseshit. I got over rape because I transcended humanity. He's not even saying he got over rape. He's saying he could get over it. So, sorry. Let me rephrase so as not to straw man the dinkus. I could get over rape just fine because I've transcended humanity. I could get over PTSD just fine because I've transcended humanity. I can get over holding my best friend bleeding to death in my arms just fine because I transcended humanity. <sighs> okay. And healing takes time. Which is true. It's not instantaneous. His argument is that time is not a factor. Were somebody to take my hammer and sodomize me today without my consent? That's not something I would get over tomorrow. That's something that would linger with me for years. <laughs> Forensic it. I reject my humanity, Jojo! Fucking... Dio is an asshole, okay? <laughs> Just... That's pretty specific, Cyrus. And I it doesn't take time, it takes, it takes knowledge. It I threw the other hammer. Now we have to use the tiny one. Just. The tiny one hurts more. But I still remember he said it.
doesn't take time to get over trauma, everybody. You've just got to transcend humanity. You just need knowledge. You know what I like more than a Lamborghini? Knowledge. I know I shouldn't be memeing right now. But it's about the only coping mechanism I have for this. It takes information. It, it takes perspective. It, Listen, no, Atheist off. Rationale, do not interrupt me because this is no, not your calling. <laughs> oh, that's a claim. Also, <laughs> Aura echoes in the chat. Do I need to call out for some help? Because that was a really specific. That was a really specific thing. Uh, no, but I've had nightmares. Um, also, this is a, this is a uh, fan art that was submitted earlier. And God, you people with the image zero, it replaces the original image when you do that. Why? Uh, but we have real service in a jar. That's a very convincing real service in a jar, too. Dragnaut also getting in on this with a uh, Microsoft Paint. A Microsoft Paint service. MS Paint service is here. He's here to teach you. He's also here to suffer. Okay, let's get MS Paint Cirrus over here. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <sighs> Sai Srenka with the $2. No, no, Chino Sadame Jojo. <laughs> Fucking. Okay. Uh... Jake3D with the $2, not the size of your hammer. It's how hard it hits. Yeah, and the fact that this hammer's made of wood and the other one's made of foam means that this one hurts a whole lot more. It really does. It hurts. Silas, for the $4.99, stupid, this offensive, physically painful, as well as mentally. Yeah, no, that's why I'm bludgeoning myself with the hammer. The hammer hurts less than his arguments. I just want you guys to know that. The hammer actually hurts less than the shit he's saying. But you know, what are you going to do? The You're... problem is this. It's not about time. I'm, I'm telling all of you human beings right now. Yeah, of course, you're not one of them because you transcended humanity, right? It's not about fucking time because guess what? Time doesn't heal shit if you don't have a different viewpoint for how the thing... Time doesn't heal shit, so you don't think that proximity to an incident uh, actually does, in fact, uh, increase the sting of that incident? You, you don't think that that's the case? Proximity to an incident has no bearing over how much that incident stings? How, ha has no bearing over what that incident means to the individual? Is that your argument? Is that where we are? Proximity to an incident means nothing, according to... Messenger reveals the the man who thinks he can cure PTSD because he needs some kind of help. Really, so you went through it's right different. Now, and I feel like you need to like back off because like she doesn't need this right now. It's not so, about like... that. It's about about the reality. It's not about time. Time. <laughs> Sysrenka so says, "Yer yer days." This guy is so deep in it, man. Time doesn't fix shit if you don't learn shit that's different. You don't fix shit if you don't learn shit. What? Okay. You know what? Let's take that. Let's take that argument. I'm, I'm willing to run with that. I'm willing to run with that. Is everybody else here willing to run with this argument? Because I'm willing to as well. I'm going to go ahead and, and warn you, though. I am about to get into some fairly... A, a fairly dark thing, okay? Just a fair warning. This is going to get... A little dark. I hope you guys are okay with that. That is that that is my warning. We're gonna we're gonna deal with something. It's already been brought up, but the way I'm going to frame this is going to seem just a little insensitive. Uh, but it, there, there's going to be a point for it. Before that, we have one moment of remission. Sysrunka, it's. Yare, yare, daze. Serious, how dark? Okay. 
what is someone supposed to learn from getting raped? Please tell me the lesson, life lesson, the beneficial net positive thing that someone is supposed to learn from being raped. What is it? Please tell me. Is it that we live in an unfair world? There's a thousand other ways somebody can learn that. Is it that some people can't be trusted? There's a thousand other ways somebody can learn that. They probably already knew that. What the fuck is someone supposed to learn from being physically and mentally violated? What? I know he's not here. In fact, actually. I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to do a thing. I have a suspicion. Huh. <sighs> Emmett says I may need to leave. If you need to leave, then that is fine. That's why I gave my warning that this part of the conversation is where things are going to get a little more heavy. Things are going to get a little more dark. Things are going to get worse than before. What is somebody supposed to learn from this? What is the ultimate life lesson? that somebody can learn from watching their loved one bleed out in their arms. What's the lesson? What's the takeaway? The world's a dark place. She was in the military. She already knew that. That was not news. That wasn't a new thing to learn. That was old hat by that point. So what was the lesson? What was the lesson messenger reveals? What's the lesson from sexual assault? What's the lesson from having your friends die around you? Is it just that the world's cruel? We already know that. There are children that learn that at age five. It's not a new lesson. So why is it important for it to be reinforced? What's the point? point is there is none there is nothing to be learned from it the only thing that can possibly be learned from those scenarios is possible coping mechanisms after down the road that you can then help other people with who suffer from it as well but in that case for me to say that that's a good thing i must also say that the damage that other people are suffering is a good thing because that's what that entails so no, it's a net fucking negative. There is no benefit to it. There's nothing that is gained from that. Especially if we look at this in the way that a pragmatist like me would look in this in a sense of cost-benefit analysis. From a cost-benefit analysis way of looking at this, The net gain is zero. It's a negative. There is no net gain. It's only loss. The one or two coping mechanisms you learn from it wouldn't even be necessary if it hadn't have happened in the first place. So what is it? Because the only lessons that can possibly be learned from this either have been learned by a thousand other means earlier in life or are only useful because they allow you to deal with the fact that the thing happened in the first fucking place. So what's the point? Emmett, I saw what you sent. 
Is that something that you are comfortable with me voicing to everybody in the chat? Is that something you're comfortable with me voicing to everyone? I feel like it would be pertinent, but I also do not want to do so without your consent. Okay. Emmett, my girlfriend, my channel artist, has just sent me a message on this topic. The first person she opened up to told her that it was an important lesson about the fact that she should not sin. That it was her way of being punished and that she needed to repent. This person basically told her the rape was necessary. She was also told that it was to teach her that she didn't own her own body. That she belonged to the person who raped her. Because he had claimed her. That was what was told to her. That was what was told to a rape victim. These are not true lessons. You own your own body. You do. Your boredness has donated 99 cents. Thank you very much, your boredness. This is very helpful. The person who told Emmett that probably has the exact same mentality as this fucker here who told Aaron that. What lesson is there to be learned? that either can't be learned by other means or wasn't necessary in the first place because of the fucking damage that was caused. Ashley Gosh on the chat for $5. It teaches you nothing true. It teaches you not to trust, that no one cares, that the world is dark and cold. The only things it teaches must be unlearned. Much like here. Again, I'll say it again. The first person she opened up to told her that the important lesson was not to sin and that her body was not her own. All that tells you is that the person is justifying the rape by saying that they deserved it and that it was good because it let them learn lessons. This is not the case. And anybody that thinks this way, I'm not allowed to say the things that are going through my mind on air. Please keep that in mind. Continuing on. Time, because guess what? Time doesn't heal shit if you don't have a different viewpoint for Aaron's how the things really that you went through is right different. Now, and I feel like you need to like that. If somebody said rape was bad and then they got raped, what fucking changes in their viewpoint? It's pronounced couch, by the way. Okay, I'm sorry. Ashley Couch. But what changes their viewpoint? Again, if someone were to sodomize me with the back end of that hammer, I would think that that's wrong. I would think that's probably going to be painful, and I would think it would probably hurt me for many years to come. And what would happen afterwards? Well, I would think that it hurt, it was painful, and it would probably scar me for many years to come so ultimately i would have learned fucking nothing what frame of mind changes back off because like she doesn't need this right now it's not so, about like, that it's about about the reality it's not about time time doesn't fix shit if you don't learn sh do i really think that that's what he's saying here i don't think it matters What he's saying is wrong. Even if I'm misinterpreting it, the actual thing he's saying is fucking wrong. But I'm willing to be convinced he's saying something different and knock that one down too. I might be strawmanning him, and if I am, please explain to me how, and I will attack that instead. 
I have no doubt it'll be just as efficacious. Guys with the image zeros. So many image zeros. We have another one from Jack and Quill. This is apparently me saying burn, bitch. Sysrenka says, I have no words for what he just said. I have a few. I just said them. Set him on fire in Minecraft. Yes, transform him into a squirrel in League of Legends and commit uh, get first blood. Shit, that's different. Well, so I'm not going to let you sit there and spew your bullshit. That's going to. He's not going to let AR sit there and spew his bullshit, but it's okay if he does it. Remember, guys, he doesn't need evidence. To keep her fucking enslaved for the rest of her goddamn life because you she's believe not, it needs she's to be not different. She's I just got back to the, the messenger region. No, I'm sitting there serious because you guys, you guys don't have the goddamn answers. If you neither do you, buddy. If you had the answers, you would be free from the shit you're not free from. Oh my god! Please oof in Roblox. So I'm going to sit there and speak against this because I care I about her. her. Yeah. So listen, I, I care somebody... about her. No the fuck you don't. No the fuck you don't. If you did, you wouldn't have said half the shit you said. Nothing. <laughs> Tata philosophy. This guy is a soup sandwich. Yeah. Thank you for the $2. But he is a soup sandwich. <laughs> Go commit Lego foot. Athena, goddess of wisdom, why are you putting yourself through this? So there's a few reasons why. One, the entire thesis of my channel is dealing with things that can cause harm. Or just having fun, depending on what needs, what needs to be there. Um, I want to reduce harm. Part of reducing harm is pointing out harmful actors this is a harmful actor i am pointing them out i'm pointing out where they are wrong why they are wrong and how they are wrong why am i putting myself through this because the mental language that i deal with in going through this is infinitely less than the mental anguish that this person's existence puts on other people in society and I can handle that. I think so at this point... So if I sit point, there and let you spew your crap... Yeah, you say her, that while you're talking about... You say that all the time. I have a problem with that. that. I gotta... And it was about at that point that Aaron hopped out of the conversation. Now, fun fact. So, this happened while I was gone. I was gone to the store. I was picking up groceries. And on my way home, I didn't see that this was happening. Obviously. I wasn't watching the live stream. Your board is for the 199. This is why we can't have nice things. Agreed. I came home to Aaron on the floor, hugging a pillow. While Raz was doing everything in her power to comfort her and calm her down. Because this conversation had broken her. So why am I doing this? <laughs> because when somebody breaks somebody that I care about, they deserve me going over them. They deserve me exposing them. They deserve me going through every single little bit of bullshit they've done. That's why this isn't the end of this. Much like with biblical gender roles and God, Guts, and Glory and Pastor Anderson himself, and even Discount Hoven, I'm not done with this. The end of this stream is not going to be the last you see of Messenger Reveals on my channel. I've got a whole project in the works. 
Oh, no, Athena, it's fine. Thank you for the $2 again. Uh, but don't feel sorry that you asked. Asking questions is a good thing. Do not feel bad for asking questions. I have no problem answering. I'm just in a very negative headspace right now because of everything going on. So if I was maybe a little more pointed than I should have been, I'm sorry about that. I did not mean it to come off that way. But again, like I said, this isn't the end. We only have about a minute and a half left in this video. And when this is done, I'm going to go take a nap. Then I'm going to get up and I'm going to work on tomorrow's episode. Because I apparently don't stop working. Tomorrow's episode is going to be something nice and fluffy. It's going to be something that's not anywhere near as difficult to do as other stuff I've done on my channel, at least when it comes to uh, how much I have to put my brain through something. Because this feels like scrubbing my brain with a cheese grater right now. It's not comfortable. But I am going to be going over Messenger Reveals again. And in more detail. And not just dealing with how he treated one of the people I care about in a hangout. I'm going to be dealing with other things. Things that, thankfully, Atheist Rationale has been incredibly helpful in categorizing for me. Seriously, without him, a lot of the stuff that I do with people like this and the NAFB, it would be almost impossible to do. The amount of legwork that the Atheist Rationale has been doing lately is fucking phenomenal. Also, that reminds me, AR, you still need to send me uh, your address so that I can send you that laptop. Just throwing that out there since I think you're in the chat still. Sirs, before you chat, let me know what the thumbnail needs to be. I will let you know. I will let you know. Oz, my request for this month is to fuck him up. Request granted. Send it to me on Twitter. Uh, send it again because I don't remember receiving it. Um, I could be wrong, but just send it again so that I have it for posterity's sake. Play Messenger. I really think that... Um... I, I'm not sure what I missed because I did step away for a moment to use the bathroom. I just have a problem. Aaron just people... dropped out, so I yeah, I, 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 I don't Atheist know what Rationale happened. Rationale won't let the conversation continue. Aaron dropped out because AR wouldn't let the conversation continue? No, 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 my friend. No, 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 no. AR did what somebody with an actual fucking beating heart would do, and they stepped in when somebody was getting hurt. You wanted to manipulate the situation so that Aaron felt like she was trapped and could not continue in the conversation. Because that's what people like you do. They're abusers. They are damagers. And the only way that they have power is when people think that they have to listen to them. Two dollars from Saisrenka. How quickly did this all go down? This was over the course of about 10 or 15 minutes. And Shadow Twilight for the $5. He should suffer PTSD, preferably with something hammer-shaped, and then be told, what did you learn, Sonny? Oh, dear. No, I don't, I don't wish that somebody else has to suffer. I don't. Which is why I don't want to do something against Messenger Reveals. In the sense that I don't want to mobilize people against him. I don't want to weaponize anybody against him. Don't. Instead, I would like to provide information. Because I think the counteracting mechanism to shit like this is education. If people know that his shit is bullshit, and they know that it's harmful, then they are less likely to try to comport themselves to it. In so doing, preventing him from harming people. He can sit here and think that what he's doing is the right thing all he wants. I'm not here to change his mind. I'm just here to prevent his reach. He's sympathizing. I was trying to with get his... you to stop because you were affecting her physically and emotionally. You're affecting you her by that? enabling the bullshit that continues on within her existence. And you're affecting her by victim blaming. You're a goddamn tool and a dinkus. First, you told her it was basically her fault, and then you I tried to. No, her. no, don't right. sit there and get okay, into so... saying basically you told her it was her fault. Because guess what? what? It's not her fault for the shit that happened to her. Yeah, it's not her fault for the shit that happened to her. Nobody said it was her fault for the shit that happened to her. 
And you trying to claim that they did is a fucking straw man. It's so nobody's I, I, I'm fault gonna, for right, somebody right. being horrific. Okay, okay, ever. okay. Um, I'm not sure what happened. I stepped away for a moment. and People seemed... are not responsible for the assailant's poor behavior and how they fucking treat people. It's not okay. I re- yeah. But you think that the person's responsible for the mental state they find themselves in after the assailant has attacked, as opposed to the assailant, which is basically a fucking rape apologetic, my dude. How about you not? I really did not ever want this discussion to come back up again because it's... So don't also poor behavior is a very very shitty way to invalidate what has happened to gloss over it. Sit there and assert and that atrocious atrocious rationale. It's not cool. It, it, well, no, I, 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 I don't know what happened. I'm not going to sit here and say what's cool and what's not cool. But I know that Aaron dropped out and she probably had a fairly good reason for it. And I hope that whatever that reason was for isn't very good. I have people in my chat telling me that this needs to stop, and I'm I'm just going to have to stop it at this point. Um, I will come back and watch it, um, but at this point, I'm just going to stop it because I don't know what happened. And Aaron, Aaron is a friend of mine, and if she is hurt in this moment, I, I, I'm, I, I just got to stop it at this point. So yeah, I mean, oh, good night, everybody. Okay, so that's the end of that. That's the end of that conversation. It's the end of the conversation live. From what I understand, this conversation continued off air and got a little worse. But for anybody who was in the conversation, please let me know if that was the case. I could obviously be wrong. Free Spirit, uh, way too much to explain. Uh, I would say rewind to the beginning of the stream and then watch it on double speed if you can, uh, because this has been a bit of an adventure. It went all right after what was said was done. I mean, okay. Well, that's good, at least. I'm glad things improved once the person who was being mentally abused wasn't in the call anymore. Like. (sighs) So what do we find ourselves in? Well, we find ourselves in a situation where I have to yell at <sighs> This is why I have to nap after this. Oh, boy. My sleep schedule is awful. Anywho. Where are we at right now? Well, we're in a situation where we've got somebody who's obviously damaging people. Who's not doing anything to actually help. Although he seems thoroughly convinced that he is trying to help people. And I don't know how. Also, Redemption uh, Kazuki, you can join the Discord. The link's in the description. Also, in my stream chat on Discord, uh, I did have a question. And that was, do I think that... Okay. Okay, I get it, body. I get it. You want to sleep. I can't sleep yet. I have to continue. I recognize that I've kept you up for... 21 hours? Yeah, 21. I recognize that you've been up for 21 hours, but it's okay. (laughs) We don't have much longer to go. But, any in the chat, do you think that Messenger Revealed is genuine in their convictions or is malicious in mind as well as action? It's obvious. Okay, Jan, I get it. Holy shit. My body is not stopping. Um, Is it is is obvious that he's disgusting in his viewpoint and is culpable by Clifford's principle at a minimum, but do you think that he has malicious intent? No, I don't think he has malicious intent. That's the problem. I think that he truly believes that he's helping people in this way. I think that he truly, really, honestly believes that what he's doing is the right thing. That's the problem. I think it's it's incredibly difficult to show somebody that what they're doing is ultimately harmful if they think what they're doing is the correct course of action. 
It's like having an unstoppable force at an immovable object. It goes nowhere. Ashley, it's not that his Google searches don't outdo a metal, medical degree. It's that he didn't do the Google searches in the first place. He's dealing with a handful of a priori's. Because it took me about two minutes to Google search his crap. <clears throat> Nagasuji says I think that he has defensive triggers that send him over the edge in arguments when he defends himself he lashes out he tries to hurt the person questioning him he needs therapy yeah but he would deny the efficacy of therapy that's the problem his bronze age document doesn't replace a medical degree that's at least more accurate so, I think that's I think that's where we have to end it. We have to end it essentially on a to be continued, because the reality is that after this, I'm gonna do a more light and fluffy episode, and then I'm going to do another episode dealing with Deuteronomy here, and it's going to be unpleasant. Now, it might not be as unpleasant as this stream because this stream was him directly attacking somebody. So this is going to be your standard debunk with a little more personal investment than normal. So maybe that'll be something that you guys want to watch. Hopefully. And hopefully I could do some good with that because this this is a very dangerous fucking situation. It really is. Will the fluffy episode involve cats? No, actually. Let me go ahead and let you know what the fluffy episode is going to be. And it may take me a little bit to produce. Uh, if it does, I'm sorry, but I'm going to try to get it out, and it's going to come out tomorrow one way or another. But the fluffy episode is going to involve the epistemology of Darth Bane. Because I haven't done an L-hack in a while, and I haven't been able to talk about straight philosophy for a while, so fuck it, we're going to talk Star Wars. And we're going to talk about one particular Dark Lord's personal theory of truth and epistemology. So hopefully, that'll be something that you guys will be looking forward to. If so, then I will be happy to provide. We also have a couple more fan arts that have come in since I have stated things. Copy and replace. We have this one from Atria, which is, I think it's Atria. Uh, some fuzzy justice. It is a cat service therapy by <laughs> the messenger reveals. I am taking a shit on his therapy. I'm okay with this. And then we have one more from Jake 3D. And it is very much how I feel. I don't want to sleep. Brain says, fuck you. It do. It really do. Darth who? Darth Bane. He is the Dark Lord who created the rule of two that led to the Sith existing as they do in the Star Wars movies. Uh, he existed 1,000 years before uh, Star Wars Episode Four, And the reason that I want to do him first is because his epistemology is pragmatism, which is the same epistemology I have. Well, I have a caveat with it, and I think it's that caveat that separates me from Bane. Uh, be and also because I personally find ethics and shit to be important. Um, so yeah, Darth Bane has what I would call a, a brand of ruthless pragmatism as his personal theory of truth, and it ends up holding very well. Uh, along with other, there, there's another thing he has as well, a very might makes right mentality. Uh, but I need to do some research into the actual philosophies that go into that and produce an episode as a result. So, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. So I hope you guys will enjoy it. I hope you guys will enjoy it. It will be a very, very different thing. But I've been doing a lot of that lately, but with the increased amount of shit posts, 
Mr. Anderson being gay, for instance. Uh, and then on top of that, the uh, history episode, which I got the first one out, which was on mythicism versus historicity. The next one uh, might be on the desecration of Nanking, I believe. So hopefully you all will enjoy that stuff. I'm trying to make sure that I've got some more varied content on my channel besides just video responses, because I recognize that sometimes that stuff can get a little old. So, can we watch the Anderson vid? You know what? Fine. Do we want do we want to end this on a good note? Do we want to uplift everybody for just a little bit to maybe make things not quite as horrible as they are currently? Cuz like I'm all for that if you guys are. If that's what we want to do. Every marriage I've Oh boy, there's ever Anderson performed. Anderson doing some speakies. Anderson doing some speakies. <laughs> Yes, we want to end on a good note. Let's have some fun, everybody. Let's have some fun. Come on, Stevie. Go ahead and be our whipping boy for a minute here. Oh, boy. I can't get this to actually... I can't get this to actually do what I want it to do. <sighs> All right, guys. We're going to go behind the Iron Curtain. Or the, not the Iron Curtain. That's fucking Russia. No, we're going to go behind the curtain real quick. Let's check this out. Here's how we am do live streamies. This is the stuff that I usually set up before the live stream so that everything looks all like nice and pretty and magic. But instead, we're going to go ahead and just throw it there. Uh, not live, because I am awful at my job. But that's okay. All right, guys, we ready to have fun? Are we ready to have at least a little bit of fun? Every marriage I've ever performed has been a gay marriage. You know, I'm in a gay marriage. Because gay means queers. If you go to a marriage and it's not gay, something's wrong with that marriage. If you're at the wedding and people aren't gay, something's wrong. You know, and that sounds weird to you. Because gay means queers. You don't even have to go back that far, and that's what it meant. I mean, how old is the Flintstones? Gay stones meet the gay stones. Have a yabba dabba do time. A dabba do time. We'll have a gay old time. Cheerful, happy, friendly. Oh, well, you know, what do you have against gay people? I say no, absolutely nothing. I love gay people. I'm gay. You know, I'm in a gay marriage. I hope one of your children turns out to be gay. I'm like, I hope they all turn out to be gay. I'm gay. I'm the son of I'm the pervert. Obviously, later on, the marriage might be on the rocks, but good night. If you're at the wedding and people aren't gay, something's wrong. I'm gay. So, we'll end on a little bit of history. First, Sean Carroll asked who edited this together. Me. I built this. I made this shit post. And I'm fucking proud of it. <laughs> Secondly, that blue screen of death says a lot of stuff. And it is, it is, it is a nice, nice breakaway from everything else. Uh, so, one, I built it. Two, uh, Jack and Quill in the chat built the thumbnail for it. Three... I actually created a batch file that built a fake blue screen and then screenshotted that blue screen because I forgot what Photoshop was. <laughs> I forgot what Photoshop was. And then on top of that, the end song being Galactic Mermaid, that was the last second decision. That was literally just shoved in there at the last possible second. I didn't plan on having that there. And then I was like, you know what? This this video needs Galactic Mermaid. It does. It really does. And I think it shows. <laughs> I think it shows. <laughs> I kind of went parallel with the whole semantics argument. <laughs> it kind of went parallel with the whole semantics argument. So... 
<laughs> I hope everybody enjoys the gay stones and they meet the gay stones. Let's have a gay old time. I think it was fitting. I think it was enjoyable. Galactic Mermaid is the uh, is the song itself. Um, more, it's the sequence that happens in the anime. Um, but the anime, it's it's not called Galactic Mermaid. It's not. But go ahead and just type in Galactic Mermaid into the YouTube search bar to see the original video, and you'll see why it's so fitting in a video dealing with someone like Steven Anderson. It is incredibly fitting. So, that all said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know that, again, it's a heavy subject. I can't seem to get away from those on live streams. But what are you going to do? I will see you all tomorrow for tomorrow's video and Wednesday for the video dealing with Messenger Reveals. I will see you all later. Hope you've enjoyed. This is Sarah signing out.